Hello folks, I'm Esther Emery and you're watching the Skill of the Month Club. It's February now, we're doing old fashioned cooking and this is a tutorial on how to make a perfect bone broth. We're using chicken bones today and this is actually a continuation of a video we put up the other day on how to make the perfect slow roasted chicken. We are using the same bones that we just roasted to make a great chicken broth. We're going to talk a little bit about what's great about a chicken broth and how to tell whether it's good. And also our hostess, Luana Bassett, is going to give some tricks about how she makes an excellent bone broth. Here we go. I'm going to debone it really quick and you can see how well done it is because it's going to come right off the bone. Now this is a good example here of, as you take off your chicken breast this piece right here is your tenderloin and it's very very tin, tender and just in case you didn't know that <laughs> Just a little bit of information. I'm going to save all the bones, including uh, the pieces with cartilage and um, for my bone broth, because the cartilage um, will cook down and the good um, uh, minerals and glucosamine chondroitin that's in here is really good for us and why our grandparents would cook would never ever go without cooking a um, the chicken bones they didn't waste anything and um, I think as a millennial person um, with health issues that I've had with arthritis um, joints a degenerative arthritis um, I've had to supplement with um, chondroitin, glucosamine, and we're missing some of those good things in our, our uh, health. So it just falls apart. Skin everything I'm going to save and put in there. Now it's already been um, cooked so the uh, knuckles and everything are kind of soft and I can put my fingernail in that. So this is cooked probably for about three hours. Of course, there's going to be some meat left on the bones that will be awesome for in our chicken noodle soup. And it's okay if those herbs go back in there. It's okay if the carrots go back in there. It's okay if the fat goes back in there. Okay, well, um... I'm just going to chop up, just randomly chop up a whole onion. You can see this is a large onion. And I'll just quarter it, eight maybe, and throw it on in there. I'm going to throw in, oh, about four cloves of garlic, whole garlic and celery. The broth from the roasted chicken and the fat, everything is going right in there. And then I'm going to fill it full of water just to cover the bones and the vegetables. If you like, you can add one to two tablespoons of um, um, apple cider vinegar with the mother, and that helps pull out the bone marrow from the bone. Um, I've done it both ways. I per personally prefer not using it, but I know some people love it. Okay. 
And since I've already seasoned my chicken, it has lots of herbs on it and on the skin. Um, I'm not going to add any more salt or pepper or herbs right now at this point. But I am going to add a teaspoon of turmeric, which is also an anti-inflammatory and wonderful for our bones. And, and uh, adds a lot of flavor, especially to chicken soup. If you have fresh um, turmeric, about a half an inch to an inch of a root chopped up is good. Okay. okay. I'm going to bring it up for a simmer and I'm going to let that simmer for an hour or two. It's already baked for three hours. Um, if it was just raw bone, um, or a knuckle or um, a stew bone, I would probably uh, simmer it for up to 12 hours, even 24 hours, cook it on slow or put it in a crock pot and cook it up overnight. So, um, but where this has been baking in the oven, I find it still, you get the congeal, the everything you need if you just simmer it for a couple hours after you've already baked it. After I've um, boiled my broth, um, I've strained it. Let me see. Through a fine stainless steel mesh. This is extra fine. And then I poured it into my quart jars. Now I let, let it cool completely before I put it in the refrigerator and then I refrigerate it. And then it'll look like this. And the excess fat will float to the top and that is just really, really easy to remove. You can play with those if you like. Yeah, they're just for play. And you can see how congealed this is. Um, this is really, this is from bone marrow. And this is what a lot of people are lacking in their diet. It's so good for your joints, um, for your gut health. So. It's thick and congealed, wonderful for your hair and nails also. Well, thanks for hanging out with us. I hope that you also are making bone broth. I do bone broth every week, and although mine is not as perfect as Luana's, I, I know that it's contributing significantly to my family's health. I can't recommend it more in terms of a, a habit to be in, to really make our meals stretch and get the most we can out of what we can grow and raise ourselves. You've been watching the Skill of the Month Club. I'm Esther Emery, and we'll see you next time.